Ah, here we go. The Shelter Footy Cast. Don't look at me like that, Mark Reddings. Live from Backchat Studios. You can follow us on socials, Shelter Footy Cast on Instagram, and send us an email if you like, footycast at shelterbrewing.com.au. Skeeter, how are you? Uh, great to be with you, Scoey. Uh, by the way, first up, uh, how was your birthday during the week? It was really good. Went to Crown Towers. Giddy up. So, yeah, so I didn't know where we were going last time we chatted, but we went to Crown Towers, spent the morning, the day at the pool with the kids, flicked the kids off, went to Nobu. Very nice. Ride. You were spoiled, as you should be. I, uh, have you ever had, um, have you ever chosen like the, the Wagyu, like the, you know, 100 year grass fed <laughs> stuff? That, you, you know what I'm talking about? The, the, have you ever Elite done that at a mates. Japanese restaurant? No, I haven't. I, I always skim past it because it's expensive. Expensive, yeah. I thought, you know what, I'll treat myself. I, I wanted to do it. And it's my birthday, when else could you do it? Did it. I could have happily just had it, you know. Fifteen dollars steak from Woolworths, mate. I went to Coco's once. Seriously, all the boys were ordering all ordered the steaks. Yeah, because we all had to basically chip in a, a, a four ways. The steaks were seventy five dollars for me. <laughs> that's fractionally over the odds. Uh, anyway, I look like I'm going to the Australian Open today. You look like you're either. I know it's Happy Australia Day to everyone out there, but you look like you're performing for Chippendales. I'm not sure what the <laughs> fuck's going on with you. What the hell is Chippendales? Chippendales is a strip, a stripping sort of agency that. Uh, <laughs> And you got the chains. You got more shirt uh, buttons undone than the bloke in the Bachelor last night. I'm an issue, my brother. How are you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> got, I'm actually off to a Bucks party today, Skeeter. So oh, that'll end well. I'd, I'd, I'd come in here. We've got some shelters on. Um, you know, just where we're going. I won't say you, anything you can else. See, you can see Rick tonight. Say, but first tonight. <laughs> <laughs> 23 <laughs> lunatics have been, yeah, I just know what's going to happen. Uh, very good, Skeeter. So, yes, I'm here and, uh, and I'm ready to go. We're going to finish this and I'm straight out the door. But it is time for the Shelter Footy Cast. You can watch us on YouTube, listen to us as a podcast. It shelters Summer of Sour. I dare say there will be some sours consumed responsibly today. If you want to change your boundaries on beer, Skeeter, we're still yet to get you to do it. I want you to do a sour review. And yep. I, I think we can do that here on the Shelter Footy Cast. You having a sour, you tell us what you think. I think that could be incredible. Okay. And just double checking on the, the boat trip today, it's just blokes, yeah? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> just Abs- checking. I'm just asking the question. <laughs> absolutely. We're all going to be on the sours, refreshing, crisp, crushable, just how I like it on a summer day here <laughs> in Perth. What could go wrong? There's a competition. We're not going to be able to take the Victor Lawnmower on board, but if we're out in the boat, the custom mini mal up for grabs, we might be able to take that one for a little bit of a pre-surf. $600 of exclusive escape vouchers, as well as heaps of beer and merch and everything you like. So you can enter on the website, shelterbrewing.com.au. Is the product placement in 2023 getting a little bit heavier for this podcast? Well, it? yes, here we go. Right here. <laughs> Outdoor shower, sour, the summer of sour. So, uh, so we're not the ABC by the sounds, but we are very much into promoting products. Shelter born and brewed in Bustledon, <laughs> WA. That's correct, Skeeter. Um, now, I want to start on um, on this one. This is straight out of Melbourne. You came in with this. Um, there was some controversy last year with some people charged around match fixing, um, umpires specifically. And Michael uh, Pell was yep. uh, obviously, uh, dare I say, fingered on that issue of betting, Brownlow, uh, and all that's gone on. And that's, that's a, a, a terrible result for him and obviously his career you, you think is over but there's a report coming out of Melbourne about there's speculation and an investigation perhaps into umpires after matches looking at their phones to check out the stats before giving their votes on Brownlow. Are they the Brownlow. Not, and they're not allowed to do that? Not allowed to do it. Right. Not allowed to do it. Uh, so that, that story may develop. Personally, I, if it's worth discussing it, I think every other award that we look at in footy Yes. Whether it's judging the Norman Smith medal, whether it's coaches' votes, they look at the stats, yeah. to my knowledge. Yes. Um, why should umpires be different for the most prestigious, the most, the highest accolade you can get in the game on, on an individual level? Is that what makes it prestigious, though? Is that what makes the tradition so great that it's by the eye, that it's by the influence without statistics? Could well, that, I argue that? Yeah, yeah, you definitely could argue it. But, you know, the umpires cop a lot of stick. If you're, if you're watching the Brownlow night and in round three you know that uh, Paddy Cripps got you know 38 touches three goals and and six assists or whatever yes and he doesn't get three Brownlow votes because the umpire for whatever reason or the umpires didn't come to that conclusion from what they saw you're going to say they're absolute numbskulls so I I would have yeah I don't mind them getting the stats I know it's illegal or it's it's not within the rules at the moment but why shouldn't they have the information that everyone else has? So, so there's some accusations that this is happening, is it? Or happened? Or? There's, I think there's 
uh, accusations or at least there's an investigation or there's a suggestion. So whether it comes to pass or not, again, allegations, but it brings up a discussion I think that's worth having. Yeah, absolutely. Um, where do I sit on it? I think I, I've i been pushing that, you know, it's a midfielder's award and that, that is because it's by eye and the umpires are just seeing what's around the ball. It's very difficult to keep your eye on you know, the influence of a defender or, or a forward unless they kick goals. But nothing will change no. if we, they see the stats because that will only, I guess, put into the spotlight that yeah. midfielders have got it 35 times, don't you think? Yeah, and, and especially if it's not just kicks, handballs, marks, if they can look at efficiency and they can look at one percenters and mm. they can, you know, that sort of stuff as well, and metres gain, you know, that's that's become you know, quite popular in, in judging players' games. You know, a backman, 700 metres gained. You know, maybe that creeps them into one vote, that sort of areas. Let me throw... This is a tough question to, to ask and to answer, but can you recall playing for the Eagles a match you look back on and thought either, gee, how come Luke Shuey didn't get three votes that day or how did, say, for instance... Scoey, uh, me. Well, Scoey you know, pick you know, up... Do was was there what? something that shocked you at the footy club and you all laughed about... Uh, the week or nah. a year later? Brownlow is, well, I, I don't know. I, I was on the list when Pritter won, yep. won, won the Brownlow. Um, and and Cuzzy and Juddy had just sort of won them once I got to the club. I, I, as much as, as prestigious it is, as it is, no players running around trying to win it. And no, so, no. No, so I just mean the interest on the night is... Is all that it is. It's not a thing that. You but you didn't see the table go. Wow, he was best on. Our bloke was best on. I, th- I thought he was okay, but no, no. To answer your question, no. Okay. Like I, I can't, I can't remember thinking that. And like, if it ever was, it was sort of like, oh well, like, yes, that's yeah. just how it, go- you know, all yeah. that. That's how it goes. So, you know, Pruder, I think was was runner up the following year. Like, it, it proven yeah. vote getter. Yeah, correct. It's just around the footy. And I don't know whether it has an influence. We're sort of going away from the topic a bit here, but socks up, curly so- hair. Didn't argue with the umpire. Got on with the job. Yeah, true. There's something to be said for that. Yeah, actually, don't be a dickhead because <laughs> Pritter was not. He was one of the best blokes of all time on and off the field. Um, what about this one, Skeeter? We're going to cover this a little bit later in the show, but I just want to throw this at you and I just want to get a quick reaction on it. The Southwest Pelicans. We're talking uh, in the NBA? No, we're not. We're talking the Bunbury Southwest Pelicans. I've got S- suggested to... by the mayor, I'm guessing. Well, that's correct, Skeeter. And I've got a gut feeling that he might just barrack for the New Orleans Pelicans. <laughs> oh, I hate the the the, the, the Pat mascot Pelican. I feel like that's something of. I it's swear, Al- Elf Stewart used to call people Pelicans on Home and Away, like you bloody Pelican. Like it's, it sounds ridiculous. What about Shelter Stadium? How does that sound? <laughs> uh, no, so, you got to like Shelter that. Stadium's got a lot to like about it. Can we just have it adjoining the actual uh, current facility there? We might have our own corporate suite. Okay, very good. That would Mind be, you, we'll that be, would be nice. by the time we get that twentieth team, you'll have you'll have a few more buttons undone. <laughs> I you'll can't have, have many more. Bigger, bigger gut, and I'll be completely looking like an old man. Do you want to jump on back chat? We're doing a weight loss program up until April second. I'm trying to lose ten kilos. Ten, April, yeah. With all due respect, you don't need to lose ten. I'm 108 kilos. I'm yeah. 108. Yeah, I'm 108. No, you, you carry it. This well. is like a, a love loving. Yeah, you don't look <laughs> like carry it well. Mate. Thank you, Skater. Look, I think it's more on my legs and you know maybe my back. You can't quite, you can't quite see it from front on. Sort of the face as well, I think. <laughs> oh, <laughs> very, that, thank you, thank you, fucking Dan Ponst. Are you fucking right over there, mate? Look at, look at little, little <laughs> fair nickel. I would just say uh, Matthew Prittis was three votes off drawing with Nat Fife the following year. Thank you very he much, Dan. Right. Um, That's enough from you as well. Don't mind mate. the weight loss thing because my daughters and my wife, they, uh, as my wife says, you don't hold any weight on your legs or your arms. It's just your gut. I said, well, hello. <laughs> Most blokes are in the same boat as me, Victoria, but that does happen in life. If, if fair dinkum, and, and you won't know this, because I'm, I'm almost old enough to be your dad I've worked out, because you're 34, I'm almost 53. Yes. Some is people it, do think that, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you might be my father. Um, is it, it, after 50, it gets a bit harder, trust me, to, to oh, lose yeah. the weight. Oh, yeah. uh, particularly, if you drink, particularly if you're drinking a bit more <laughs> than what you should be. Anyway, Shelter, thank you, thanks for your sponsorship. No, well, I'd like to get involved with that, seriously. Okay. All right, I don't want to lose 10, I'd like to lose 5. All right, great. We're going to put you on board. Sounds good. Over at Back Chat, you can follow us over there. And just a reminder, the Shelter Footy Cast will be going onto its own feed in the coming week. So at the moment, when you're listening as a podcast, you're listening right now, you're listening on the Back Chat feed. Shelter Footy Cast will be going... We've just become a little bit too big for our boots here on the Shelter Footy Cast, and we're getting our own feed, Skeeter. So um, you'll have to get your daughters to explain this to you. I have no idea what you're talking about. (laughs) When you're listening to a podcast, right now you search for Back Chat. 
in a couple of weeks, you search for Shelter Footy Cast. You'll have its own feed. It might even have your head sitting at the top in a profile picture, Mark. Well, it'll be a first because, as you know, I've never, including this one, never listened to a podcast in my life. Stay tuned here on the Shelter <laughs> Footy Cast Back Chat Studios. Mark Reddings, Will Schofield. Now, let's get into this one. The 20th franchise in the AFL, the Southwest Pelican, which started from an article. Quarters did. I think quarters. Glenn Quarterman, Quartermain did, which I think he was expecting just to basically people read it and move on. But there are some that have uh, have thought there's some traction here. Jason Miguel, the mayor of Bunbury. The secret is out. This is, this is quite, I quote, uh, this is yesterday. Uh, the secret is out. I've already started the groundwork to get the AFL's 20th team based here in Bunbury. Should those apple-loving, clean-air-breathing Tassies get the green light, it makes perfect sense for WA to even the playing field. And for that team to be based here in the southwest. Our infrastructure is set to be boosted with the multi-million dollar redevelopment of Hands Oval. We have the population and incredible talent to boot and the southwest is the best region in the country. Who's with me? Hashtag Southwest Pelican Skeeter. And there's the logo. Logo. <laughs> what do you think, mate? It looks like a deformed eagle. It's, it's not quite... Can you hold it up, hold up to the, your camera? I'm there. not sure there's... Uh, yeah, no, hats off to him. He's having, having a dash and it comes off the back of the article. I'll tell you what, though. I think Bustleton, but yes. If Bustleton or Bunbury, what I will be doing is just, apart from going to shelter, it's just I like the, the Bunbury growers markets. Is yes. that the one on the way down? That's that's very nice food and that's produce. Correct. That so, is correct. So apart from that, uh, I think it's a long shot. I think you could attract players similar to what Geelong has done, right? Off, yep. the, off, off the back of their success as a football club for starters. But Geelong as a lifestyle location is is now what they sell. I know that for a fact, having spoken to a few players. If you think about Jeremy Cameron, yep. he now all you see on social is him driving tractors around and pulling yabbies out of his dams in Geelong. Was he not lines. a Geelong boy originally? Um, or close by? No, it, it was a it was a country lad. Okay. Um that's what it brings though. That they can play in sort of a a regional town, which is Geelong is pushing the spectrum in terms of regional, but um, they can live on a farm. Tom Hawkins lives on a farm down there. Jeremy Cameron does. Mm. Uh, and it's close to the surf as well. So I think you could actually push that a little bit with the southwest, but potentially you could argue that with Perth as well. What about West Coast and Freo? A bit of a, a whip around there. Um, match sim started now. Uh, we're starting to hear a few more match reports there, but the official preseason matches have been... Uh, Released, Released, basically. Yeah. The Adelaide teams are coming here. Port Adelaide and Adelaide, of course, they're going to, I think, behind closed doors, they're going to have a, a hit out by all those the clubs. Week before this, which is Fremantle versus Port Adelaide on March 2nd. Yep, and then March Free 3. Oval, and then March 3 at Lathlane Park, West Coast v Adelaide. So those two will be open to the public the week before are closed, I yep. believe. Yep, and look, I... I've been I've been hoping for this scenario for a long time yeah. to to pull back the number of, of practice matches, um, and just have like I think the one is perfect. I mean, you can do the match sim. Yeah. Like, you might have a different idea on on how it should run, but from a spectator's point of view, us covering three or four practice matches, it just do your match sim, have a practice match, have your two or have your week break into it. That's how I like it. The, the, the one's good, and and what else I like here is is. The West, Coast, the West Coast and Freo, the West Australian teams, get a different look at teams. Because for probably the last five, six years, mm. they've only seen Freo and West Coast in the preseason, which which is fine, but they're playing each other twice in, in the regular season. To have two different teams, Port Adelaide and Adelaide will come over here for a week. To have a look at what other sides are doing, I think is an advantage for West Australian teams, plus the, 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 the less travel. It is murmured and rumoured that next year Reciprocal. it'll be reverse. Mm. And I've seen on the back of that some, some talkings on social media, Skeet, that perhaps gather round, if it goes well in Adelaide this year, maybe they'll flip it to Perth next year. Yeah, Maybe I'm, they do the old switcheroo. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise you. New South Wales were putting their hand up for it. I know that... Is there uh, anything they don't put their hand up for, though? No, Seriously. well, I don't mind it, though. I yeah. mean, if, if, you, if you're if not in it, you can't win it. So if, if WA could get it next se- season gather round, uh, my only issue is, I know we're going away, yeah. where, where do you play the footy? I mean, do you, it, do you go to da- Hands Oval? I mean, do you, I'm serious. What, what are the venues? You've got, you got June Lup potentially. I mean, are there so AFL you, standard you, grounds? You definitely put one at Leadable Oval. 
you could pack that far that, that far bank would go off. You'd have fifteen thousand in there easy, mm. wouldn't you? No, just just the quality of the, the surface. I mean, it has to be better than what it has been over if the past in the preseason. Though it gets ripped up during the season. Yeah, and, and the mud. You know, the mud. But early in the season, mud. you're saying you're talking about a gather round. Yeah, I th- well, I mean, gather round is round two or three. I think yeah, it's no, no, it's a little bit later than that. Is but it? It's early. Yeah. So I think in terms of quality, that's the best quality waffle round in the competition. And then does Joondal up? Does does Joondal up have a look? Um, does 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 Mandra? You know, does does Rushton Park in Mandra have a look? They got round a, five, round, round five, five this yeah. Year. And now MRP as a venue, perhaps. Well, you're correct. I mean, you know, Perth Oval. So, but none of those grounds are getting any more than ten. And Optus could still have two or three games over that weekend, or even four. Uh, more. Like you yeah. play Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, two Saturday night, and yeah. probably one in the in the yeah. in the day. So yeah. you've got five. You probably only need another three, which is what they're doing in Adelaide. True. They're only they're only playing so. Oh, I think Perth would get around it too. You know, you'd pack it out. And, ma- and maybe it is the time to chuck one down south somewhere. Mm. I, don't, I don't know what the best ground is down there, though. Is it Hands Oval in Bunbury? I'm not sure. No, no idea. Very good. Um, that's the West Coast and Freo wrap. Uh, a couple of a whip around the West Australian teams. The Scorchers, of course, the qualifier this weekend on Saturday. is a bit of a preview for that. It's huge. Steve Smith coming to town. Ashton Agar, who's also going to India, not available to play. because so they've, they've sent a group of spinners, spinners to yeah. India? Yeah, I, don't, I get it. I mean, playing in India is going to be a really tough task. And the spinners, I'm not sure Ashton is... Test quality at the moment. He just hasn't played any long form cricket, really. He played the Test match in Sydney, but so it'll give him a, a chance to to go over there and, and hone his skills. It's it's a world away from what they'll be facing um, in in Australia, of course. So, but yeah, Steve Smith coming to town. Twenty five thousand tickets already sold yesterday. Wow. Now I don't know. Obviously, we haven't made too many inroads in getting access to us going on on Saturday to the cricket, but we're still waiting for the the well, call up. The uh, email is still set up. Uh, it is footycast at shelter brewing. <laughs> no, yeah, footycast at shelter brewing dot com dot au. If you'd like to send uh, Mark Greens, Will Schofield, VIP tickets to the final, we're happy to take them off your hands. Absolutely. Um, so it should be a terrific game. And look, the big bash. I think the quality has been pretty good. There's been enough interest. The tightness of the matches and the scorches. To be honest with you, they shouldn't be. Finishing top of the table, just on the if you look on, on paper, their list. their list is good, but it ain't ain't superb. They've had some great input from um, Aaron Hardy. He's been a revelation. He'll play. I said he'll play Test cricket at some stage, maybe alongside Cam Green. I I, I put that uh, to the coach of the Scorchers and and he he uh, who, who am I think what's Adam Voges yeah Adam Voges uh, the weekend after you said that and he said could definitely see that happening. So he's a big fan of. Hardy's oh, he's well. a talent. There's no question. Uh, Inglis has had a really good uh, series. Aston Turner's had his moments. They've all been, and Cam Bancroft's come good. So, look, they're a team with not huge names. But I'll tell you what, a team that has proven that you can't just have the big stars um, and succeed. I'm talking about the Melbourne stars. They are last on the table. They have been putrid. They've never won a big, big bash title. They've always gone for, obviously, Warney used to represent them. Yep. and They had, they always go for the high-profile Stornis players. in there now. Is Stornis is, is in there, yep. yep. But never have they looked like a team um, that could really be consistently uh, consistently successful. I put it out of Rogers as well around culture. So he's sick, sick of answering the questions around like winning and culture. Yeah. And he said, "Well, no, you know." And but it means something. It clearly it clearly has to mean something because, like you said, that they don't have the list to do what they've done, but they still do it. So that that means it's taking talent away and it's and it's playing together as a team. Absolutely. Just quickly, Joe Richardson, hamstring. Uh, didn't Comes back. train during the week, but no. he, he look, there, there's hope that he'll play. And Matt Kelly, who we spoke about with that uh, nasty knock yeah, to the face, out. didn't just did walk laps the other day, so he's set to miss. Um, but, yeah, their bowling's been... And Andrew Ty, AJ, got to give him a pat on the back. 100 BBL matches coming up uh, on the weekend. He's been at... Apart from last weekend, he's been outstanding for them. And he did say the same thing. He said, you know what? What's the key to our success? He said... We enjoy each other's company on and off the field. I think that goes for a lot of sports. Absolutely. Is it like a qualifying final? If they lose, they get another chance? Yeah, of course they do. Absolutely. Okay. Well, looking forward to sitting in our VIP box on the Saturday. Um, I'll probably still be hungover from today. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) The Perth Wildcats take on the Illawarra Hawks Friday in Perth. They had a great win here for retro round, what they were calling it, but then they, they lost the following game. They'll be looking to bounce back against Illawarra, and then they've got Jack Jumpers in Tassie on Sunday. They should be making playoffs. They should be. Yep. I mean, Illawarra's no good. Yep. They, they're, 
they're officially average. So they should be beating them by a big margin. But they need to clean up. As I said the other day, their rebounding was terrible against the, the Phoenix. Uh, they are defensively not good enough, coughing up 100 points or more. Um, they need to tidy that up to even be close to, to challenging. So, uh, yeah, they'll, they'll go well against the Hawks. They'll beat them. The jack jumper's always hard away from home. Are they playing them home or away, do you They're know? playing them in Tassie, yeah. Yeah, so that's always a difficult trip for them. So, um, yeah, I stand by the fact that I don't think they could win it unless they improve dramatically so, right, defensively. We've heard, we've heard you're just absolutely writing them off for the last week or so here on the Shelter Footy, Footy I'm just being honest. I know. You want my I've, opinion, I've I'm telling you. you. I've, have, I've heard you loud and clear. This um, is a different side. They're more offensively based, but to win titles, as you know, Scoey is a uh, premiership defender. It is the back line, essentially, in footy and in basketball, absolutely. the defensive side, which gets the job done. Always is. I don't know if you've got any updates on the Perth Glory. They're away this weekend. Uh, Adam Taggart. Yeah, got thigh strain, which is... Uh, a couple of, too many goals. Yeah, just, he only had to get three touches for two goals, but that's what he brings, quality. Yeah. Uh, they've got the, one of the longest trips in domestic sport going to Wellington. Wellington. And I spoke to Chris Coyne after the match on Saturday night, to be yep. honest, and he was talking about they're going to come back up, they've got to stay in Melbourne for a night, or they've got, got a, a, a layover there, then to Wellington, then I've got to drive up to, I think they're playing Palmerston or somewhere. They're playing, wow. it's not a simple trip. The A-League has completely screwed them over with, I mean, it's hard enough going from Perth to New Zealand, but then to... They, have to, they the, have to play them. Though. Oh, they of course they do. No yeah. question about that. But then to, to not just go to, say, wherever they land in, in Wellington or Auckland, wherever they're going, they've got to go up to Palmerston. Mm. I don't even know where Palmerston is, but <laughs> I don't know. Lot. I've only been to Queenstown. Plays so. over <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the glory. Uh, it was good to see them get the result, uh, but missing Taggart, if that's the case, that's going to be tough for them. And, uh, in fact, a tough couple of weeks on the road. You know what it's like when you do a long road trip. It's not just that trip. It's the one when you backing up the next week. We are here on the Shelter Footycast. We're going to get back into footy in a second and we're going to go through Mark Reddings and myself, Will Schofield's ups and downs of the ladder after this. It's Shelter Footycast. Now, let's get back into our bread and butter, Skeet, the AFL. Now, I went back into the archives, not too far, it was only probably six weeks ago, <laughs> but but we went back and we, we had a look at, I asked you on Monday who you thought was coming up and down from the ladder last year. Um, traditionally and, and historically, two teams come up from the um, bottom part of the ladder and two teams drop out of the eight. So I did ask you this before Christmas. How's your memory going? Can you remember? I can't remember last week, let alone <laughs> 2022. Skeeter's ups are... Port Adelaide. Yes, that is correct. Port Adelaide. And a side that very, very narrowly missed out last year. They missed out in the last game, last minute, by a point. Blue baggers. That's right, Carlton. So your ups were Port Adelaide and Carlton. Do you mm. stand by those? I'm prepared. To, yeah, no, I'm not trying to just jump on your bandwagon. I'm The more I think about it, I'm prepared to put the Eagles in that in that group. Okay. So you're prepared to... You want anyone else? You want to put it? Put anyone else? You asked for two, I'll give you darts, three. More darts I'll give you three. I, I'm, I'm, happy to, I'm happy to keep Carlton there. Okay. I'm happy to put... Uh, who's the other team I'll put? Port Adelaide. Port Adelaide. Yeah. But I, I think the Eagles will be the biggest improver from last year. My ups were the West Coast Eagles. I, I, I still do think um, we, we'll just see a completely different side. If they can if they can keep players on the field, it, it won't, you know, they're not trying to improve from the side from last year because it'll be a different side. Does does the way they're going to play and, and do their players stand up to, um, you know, being a bit a year older and, and you got some young guys coming through? That time mate. will tell. Mm, um, yeah. Oscar Allen apparently is looking amazing on the track. Easy to say that in January, but he's... But he's but he was the year before he, he mm. you know, last year, right? He, he was the one that was taking the big leap. He's going to be a top 10 player in the AFL, and then we don't see him at all last year. Where does he, does he play full forward? Ha, well, um, yeah, it'll be interesting. I mean, I mean, Jack Darling's still a very good player, and, and Oscar will need a Jack Darling in the side, just, just like a Josh Kennedy needs a, a good player as well, to, to take that attention away. Because if you just have an Oscar Allen, um, we've probably seen it, a little bit with, you know, maybe an Aaron Norton or, or, or a King at St Kilda that if teams can shut down that solo, yep. you know, talent, um, even like a Peter Wright at Essen, and I know that's not a great example, but he doesn't have any support. To have, you know, twin a pairing, um, I think that'll be important. Does he play full forward? Probably not. Jack Darling's probably the guy that plays deeper, um, just, just because of his age and the way he plays. But, you know, the way, the way West Coast, their forward line structures up, they... They basically fill in for each other. So whoever's high comes up, they don't get used. They'll double back around and be the deepest. So 
it's no longer once full forward, once an R forward. They work in a pairing and they work on sides of the ground as well. So, you know, uh, Oscar's one side, he'll go higher and Jack will slide in behind and, and vice versa. So. You know, you're asking about uh, Nick Natton and whether there's a concern still over his fitness heading into the season. Yes. And you've still got that question mark. Yeah, I do, yeah. Yeah. Do you think he'll get up for the start of the season? Um, I mean, I saw him at training. He looks he looks reasonable, but we heard Adam Simpson at his press conference. Uh, again, I, I remember last week I said you can read little things into what people say in the press. Not a lot, but but some little things. So he was asked about Nick Nananui, and I think his answer was somewhere along the lines of uh, all, all, all going to plan, all going well, but we're not going to rush him. You know, Nick Nananui fit and firing and ready to go. Simo's like, he, he's, he's good. Flying. Yeah, he's going to match him f- yeah. f- full go. So he's clearly not there yet. But we're in January, January 26th. Yeah. So six so weeks. So it's, it's going to be it, the season starts March 16th. So it's going to be here quicker than what yep. we're feeling. And just off the back of Oscar Allen, you said, well, given Nick Nat's situation, we don't have a as in West Coast don't have a, a ruckman ready to roll. Oscar Allen won't won't do any pinching there, will he? I, I would hope not because it, it takes away from his forward line ability. It's very difficult to swap in and out of the ruck. I mean, you've seen very few guys be, been able to do it successfully. It, you know, think about guys that have done it well. You know, Luke Jackson is probably one of those guys, but he still needed a Max Gorn, who's an absolute gun of a ruck. To, you know, yeah. it, t- it takes a lot out of you. you know, I think back to my time in the Waffle in 20, uh, 2020, uh, 2021, some of the great games the Waffle's ever seen. I was swapping between the ruck and the forward and I was cooked in both positions to be really honest and I was absolutely gassed so if that's anything to go by which it's probably not um there you go now you did this last time actually um Scoey's ups Skeet's ups for the ladder what about who's missing out of the top eight Hang on, have you said who you say is going up the Eagles West Coast and Carlton you said West Coast Carlton as well yeah and I'm probably uh, fading Carlton a little bit. I'm not sure why. Sam Walsh injury um, with his back. I don't, I don't know. I'm just generally... Charlie Kerno fit? I think so. Okay. I think he is. But I'm just fading them a little bit, but I still have West Coast and Carlton. Scoey's down. I'll put my nuts on the line. I said who's bloody going out. Western Bulldogs and Sydney, just off the back of a grand final. And then I said Geelong to go back to back. And you... I, we've seen some things on this podcast, but I haven't seen too much um, more... Uh, scoffery than what you gave me after I said Geelong to go back to back. You were outraged. Who's going to win it then? Who, who do you think is going to win it before we get to your downs? Well, no, history, history says yes. it's extremely difficult I understand to that, win back to back. And but I'm just saying, that's why I'm this saying... This is what you did last time. Who's going to win then? But but who won in 2020? I mean, people were talking Melbourne. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. 2022, up to at round 10, yes. Melbourne but, to go back to back was almost... People saying, oh, it's a fate complete. They didn't even make a prelim final. Okay. So this is, this is politician speak. I know. Ski, I, you well, know hang on. What, what's, the what, what's the question? <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> this, 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 this. What is going on? Who is going to win the grand final this year, 2023? Do you want to tell me about the other teams not doing well? Just tell me who's going to win. I'm concerned about their form at the MCG, <laughs> but I'm going to put the Brisbane Lions up on top. Really? I think the, their recruitment has been terrific. Yeah, Dunkley, Dunkley comes on board. So young father, boy. son. Uh, Ashcroft. Ashcroft. There's a bit to like about them. I, I, look, I, their form at the G is, is always concerned, but in all seriousness, I, th- I think, you know, the time is just about right for them. I like it. And that's a positive call. You know, you're not going to get in trouble saying Brisbane's going to win the flag because you're being positive. What about who's missing out on the eight? Last time I asked you, surprise, surprise, you've say? just done. You didn't answer me, mate. You just kept waffling on. Who's going to miss the eight? Can you can you put? Oh, I can't remember who made the eight. Um, <laughs> so Geelong made it. Yeah, Sydney. Uh, Geelong, Sydney, Collingwood. <laughs> yeah, they're making it. Fremantle. Fremantle. I've got to have them in there. Richmond. I'm dropping Richmond out. Right. I'm they're dropping, not getting better even with, with Taranto, Taranto and Hopper. Hopper. I okay. I get it. And um, Melbourne made it. Melbourne stays. Um, I wrote these Bulldogs. down on the last run sheet. Bulldogs made it. Yep, that's yours. Bulldogs, Bulldogs Richmond. Bulldogs out. So I've gone with Bulldogs Sydney. You're going Bulldogs Richmond. Yep. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Skeeter, for putting your nuts on the line. Uh, while we're staying AFL land, uh, very good. Just make sure you timestamp that for later in the year. And Skeet did laugh at me uh, the first time and the second time, Geelong winning the flag. So I look forward to replaying all of that. Mitch Lewis, uh, very important for Hawthorne's, mm. um, maybe not success, but I guess building behind some real talent. He's one of those top five guys of that club now, uh, given they've moved on some senior guys. St- Drained AC. ACL, mm. not not AC joint in your shoulder, ACL mm. in your knee. 
I, 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 it is one of those things in footy when you hear ACL. There's never a, there's never a good outcome. No, it's it's never, you know, a strained ACL might sound. Oh, at least you didn't tear it. It's not a good thing. I've never heard of strained ACL to be honest with you. Because you, you, I've heard the term like str- like stretch like uh, like stretching. There like, has to be a tear to some degree if you if you've strained it. I would have thought, but I don't know. I'm I, I think so. You can partially tear your ACL, and yeah. if I was Hawthorn, I wouldn't be putting out in January if that's the case that Mitch Lewis is partially torn his ACL because that would that's just doomsday. So you may be right. Maybe he has partially torn it, and they just haven't said it, but. Oh, look, a strained ACL is not a good thing. They've said that he's missing round one, so to call that now, you, you don't you don't just chuck your ACL on ice. They don't repair themselves. So, I I just think it's it's a real shame because he he's a really big up and coming talent, um, and I think it's going to hurt Hawthorne's chances. Which brings me in a nutshell, any. Hawthorne is 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 a really fascinating with what Sam Mitchell is doing yep. there. Are you expecting a spike or a a real struggle year? Um, Neither. I think they'll. I think they'll improve, and you'll see a really consistent game plan. Um, you know that they, they won't waver from what they're trying to do. I like what he's doing. He's pretty clear. Yes, I think everyone knows where they're heading. I think that's what you'll get. Is okay. We can we can see what sort of brand of footy they're trying to bring. Uh, they were inconsistent last year. They'll be less inconsistent this year, but still they'll ha- they'll have ups and downs. They'll they'll be looking to hit a premiership window probably in another two years' time, when they get 50 games into some of these kids that they've brought in. Um, the, the, the real challenge for Sam Mitchell and the Hawthorne Footy Club is, is leadership. Is, is, you know, you've got a James Sicily there. He's be, why is he already appointed captain? He's the obvious. Yo, he's, he's given, isn't I don't, it? I don't know if there's anyone else. You know, James Warple was the only other guy that was in the leadership group, and that would be a, a difficult appointment to make, given how young he is. They're just going to struggle for leadership, but that's okay. If you get a good coaching staff in and around behind that, you can you can, which is what Sam Sam Mitchell has put all these eggs. He's put all these chips in, which I, I like. I like. Mm. What's the, what's the point of you know of, you know fifty fifty here or there? You got some older guys sort of half moving out, half moving in. Might as well go for it if if you can. Yeah, I, totally. I, I put it this way: I'd rather be a Hawthorne supporter now than say a St Kilda supporter even though Ross is going to go back there and you think improve them I just can see I can see something with Hawthorne you can see the direction with St Kilda I've got no idea what what their uh, what their modus operandi is whether they want to go young bring in experience whether they think they're in the window or not I, I think there's there's more questions about St Kilda moving forward what did Max King do to his did he hurt his knee, you know, shoulder so St Kilda, that's a huge loss for them. I mean, he's not playing until probably midway through the year. It made me think. Uh, I was looking at list Ben King at, at the Gold Coast. And he talk- comes back. Well, yeah, we're talking about teams that up and down. I think Gold Coast could improve this year. Let them improve. We want them to improve. I can't. I'm sick of talking about the Gold Coast that, as being a team thereabouts, but not quite. Like I know they're not um, massive names, but Levi Casbolt and Marby Ochoa. What they were able to do last year without a Ben King, oh, I think that's a really formidable forward line. You know, if 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 I'm looking at the at, at the Gold Coast Suns as a defender, and you got those three guys, they're all big contested marks. If they can build a game plan around that, and they can get the stoppage stuff right, I, I could see Gold Coast really improving this year. And sneaking, a, sneaking in, oh. at, a, at a at a stretch. Yeah, but but they'll be one of those sides that are competing. They're probably in line with with West Coast, which. You know, West Coast fans might not like hearing, but because you know, comparing Gold Coast and West Coast, but they, but they, they, they could be in that sort of same, same areas, the bottom couple of sides in the eight, and and the bottom, you know, top couple of sides in the, in the top eight. Eagle supporters um, would be delighted to hear you say that right. because it means they've, yeah. I mean, look, you know, this top yeah, was it. Gold Coast is just, year. just, just a shocking football club for well, forever. Yeah, they have been, but but the Eagles, Eagles, if they can. So many people saying they're going to be down now for three or four years, and maybe we're going to be sitting here with egg in our face in about six months from now. But <laughs> oh, would not be surprised if the sliders. I just cannot see. Yeah, I can see them being the biggest improver this year. Whether they make the eight, who knows? Skeeter, the boat's about to leave. Just remember, it's the summer of sour this year. Uh, well, this summer, thanks to Shelter. Make sure you get online shelterfootycast.com.au. We're going to get a review, maybe over this weekend, maybe not, of the Shelter Sours. Now go on. I just what, want to get one more prediction. From, no, one more prediction from you. Who's who's reaching the Super Bowl? Oh, we got Philly versus San Fran and Cincinnati. 
with uh, Joe Burrow going beautifully and the injured Patrick Mahomes. I, I would love to see Cincinnati, Kansas City as a Super Bowl, but it's they're, they're in the NFC together. So um, I think the Kansas City Chiefs lose to Cincinnati in an upset. That'll be an upset. I think they lose. I think I think Patrick Mahomes' ankle. Um, I, I don't think it's. I don't think it's going to be what people think it is. It, it, he rolled it inwards, which which is not the way you, you can... Mm. Re, recovering from those is difficult. I, I think he's going to be really restricted. Um, Burroughs beats him in Kansas City. And the other game is Philadelphia v... San Fran. San Fran. That's a defensive matchup. Eagles, I think, probably deserve favoritism. I, I think so. Um, but San Fran, it'll be San Fran's defense versus Philly's yeah. offense. You know, Jalen Hurts and Co. There, Purdy, probably the question mark. Can he can he keep his amazing rookie season going? I just don't want San Fran to make the Super Bowl because I don't think they can win the Super Bowl. Mm. Whereas Philly can. Yeah. I agree. So Philly v Kansas City. Are you happy with that? Or do you? I've got a soft spot for the Forty Nineers. So Cincinnati v Philly is what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, Cincinnati more than happy. I mean, they came close last year. I, I'm thinking Eagles, Bengals, <coughs> decider. Okay, very good. Look forward to following that along. It's the uh, effective the prelims this week in the NFL. So we're looking forward to seeing that. You know, betting account, just keep it under control, Skeeter. Socials at uh, at Shelter Footycast on Instagram. Footycast at shelterbrewing.com.au. Send us an email this week. We'd love to hear from you. You can follow us on YouTube. Listen to us as a podcast. Wish me luck today, Skeeter. If you're on the waters of Perth today, please keep an eye out for a bunch of blokes who just uh, need a wide berth. They've got their shirts off, their chains out, and uh, may the Bucks party end not in tears, Scoey. See you later, my bye-bye.